Uh, Les Roberts, I'd like to ask you something uh, about the methodology of the study. Clearly, uh, in Iraq, as in most uh, wars of this type, the the level of violence is uneven across the country. It, does, it might not necessarily even correspond to uh, to the uh, population densities of different areas. What was the methodology that you used to select the particular clusters uh, that you you chose? Sure, that's a great question. And you're right. In Iraq, there is a huge difference in death rates between, for example, the Kurdish North, which is relatively safe, and the Sunni Triangle, where the death rates are extremely high. And what we did was we got a population estimate of every government from the uh, Iraqi government, and we randomly allocated these 50 clusters that we were to go visit, proportional to the population in each of those governments, so that if in the Kurdish north there's only 20% of the population living in the couple safest uh, provinces, we would naturally end up with a sample that's 20% or so uh, from that zone. And then once we had picked that we were going to visit two or three neighborhoods in a certain governance or province, we would then make a list of all of the villages and towns and cities and, again, randomly pick one of those to visit so that big places had a larger chance of being visited than smaller places. And then finally, when we got down to the village level or to the section of a city, we would pick a house at random, visit it, and the other 39 houses closest to it to grab a cluster of 40 houses. And luckily, in the analysis, we can sort of look at how much variation there was between clusters. And when we reported this, we didn't say it was 655,000 deaths. We said it was 655,000 deaths. And we're 95 percent sure it's between about 400,000 and 950,000. And that, that range of imprecision is capturing that variance between neighborhoods that you describe, some places having a lot of violence and some not. So there is less than a 2% chance that the number is well below 400,000. So, you know, it's not precise. It's incredibly hard to do this kind of work in times of war and, um, I think that this is is awfully good given the conditions. Les Roberts, uh, there are some like uh, a very uh, much quoted analyst, uh, Anthony Cordesman, who are saying this is just a matter of politics. You released this study right before the election. This isn't science; it's politics. Yeah. Well, um, if I'm not mistaken, Anthony Cordesman was. Uh, formerly a Pentagon official, and, you know, I think he probably has a political lens in what he says, but this study has been underway for most of a year in terms of organizing and getting it all together. It was done in June through July. It took some time to to get the data out of Iraq uh, because of the <laughs> logistical troubles of moving people in and out. Uh, we analyzed it carefully. We submitted it to the Lancet quite a while ago, and the Lancet had control over when this came out. And um, I, I think this is just a lose-lose situation. You know, if this had come out two weeks ago, people would be saying the same thing. If this came out in the months after or the two months after the next election, people in Iraq would see this as very political in timing. So, you know, any time... Within a, a several month window here, we were going to get this accusation, and I just think it's bunk. And more importantly, is it true? It is easy. It's going to be very easy for a couple of reporters to go out and verify our findings, because what we've said is the death rate is four times higher. And a reporter will only have to go to four or five different villages, go visit the person who takes care of the graveyard, and say, back in 2002, before the war, how many bodies typically came in here per week? And now, how many bodies come in here? And actually, most graveyard attendants keep records. And if the number is four times higher, on average, you'll know we're right. If the number is the same, you'll know we're wrong. It is going to be very easy for people to verify this and get all this talk about whether it's uh, political out of the way, because 
the fundamental issue is a certain number of Iraqis have died, and if our leaders are saying it's ten times lower than it really is, we are driving a wedge between us and the Middle East. Finally, Les Roberts, I saw you upstate New York a while ago after your first study came out, and you commented on how little it was commented on or picked up here in this country, though cited all over the world. Uh, but now you have the report out in the Lancet, and you have the President Bush responding to it, even if he's discounting it. You've got General Casey responding to it. Um, what about the U.S. press looking at these figures? <laughs> you know, I think that, this is just my opinion, the U.S. press sort of follows public opinion. It doesn't necessarily lead it, except in a few circumstances like AIDS in Africa. And the public is ready to think, wow, things might be going badly in Iraq. And I don't think the public was ready to say that two years ago. And so when this study came out, Tony Blair was asked three times, I'm sorry, the 2004 study came out. Tony Blair was asked three times in the week that followed, what do you think of this estimate that 100,000 Iraqis had died in the first 18 months of occupation? No one asked George Bush about how many civilians had died or about our study for 14 months after the study came out. And then when he was asked, it was just by a member of the public in a forum in Philadelphia. And now... Within about four hours of the study coming out, he was asked directly. He was forced to respond. There's a dialogue going on. So I, I think that the, the nation as a whole is more ready to honestly talk about Iraq, and that's led the press to be more able to honestly talk about Iraq.